Well, good morning, church family. Good to have you here this morning. Happy family weekend. That's why we've got so many people missing, but that's good. They're spending time together. I'm glad we get to spend some time together as well. Uh, One of the things I love to do as a pastor and also as a uh, believer in Christ is to go on the mission field. And uh, one place in particular, uh, I introduced this because it helps me to share with you why I picked the passage that I did. And uh, it was Medellin, Colombia. About four years ago was my very first trip. And uh, you all, most of you will know Diego Cardona invited me down and I thought I'd go down first just to see what it was like to see uh, about inviting our team to go down there and help them out. And uh, when I went down there, I, I wanted to prepare very well for that. So I asked him very specific questions. What exactly do you want me to do, Diego? And he says, oh, very good. I want you to preach on the Sundays. And there was two of them that I was there. And then we just need you to get to know some of the leadership that are here. And so we're going to have you come to some of the, the elders meetings and the life group meetings uh, and just some things like that. So some of the leaders, and you're just going to just observe and watch us and we'll just get to know you a little bit better. I said, great, that sounds pretty straightforward. I remember being in my, one of my very first meetings, it was with the elders, and we were sitting down, and there was some music that we did, and, and I was enjoying the singing in Spanish, and uh, then came the, uh, there was some time in prayer, and then all of a sudden things stopped, and Diego said something in Spanish, and then everybody started looking at me. And they kept staring, and I leaned over to Diego, Diego, what exactly are you expecting? He says, oh, we want you to bring the word. I'm like, oh, okay. So I open up the Bible as if I knew this was going to happen. I had no idea. And I start, I, I pulled open uh, one of the passages here in Ephesians, and I looked at the uh, prayer of Paul for the church in Ephesus, and I thought, that's a great one. I've been doing that in my devotions, and I thought, great, I can do this, be prepared in and out of season. And so I quickly did that. And it was really amazing how God used that to encourage the people there uh, and the leaders there. And so I, I thought, okay, that's great. So we did that. It was wonderful. And then the next meeting I went to, which was uh, that afternoon, we spent some time with the staff. And uh, as I spent some time sitting there with the staff, same thing happens. We start talking, there's a song, and then all of a sudden everybody's looking at me again. I'm like, I know this. I know this routine. I can see how this is going to go. And as I was doing this, I realized I needed to spend some time that night just working through a number of messages because similar people are coming. So I can't use the same one six or seven seven times, but I ended up speaking six or seven times more than I was asked to. But God gave me a gift in that moment. God gave me a gift uh, of the prayers of Paul to the churches that he was ministering to, and it was a really amazing study. If you're interested in a study just in your own devotional time, this is a great study. Just look at the prayers that Paul prays for the churches uh, that he ministers to. And so one of the things that I want to do is look at one of those prayers in the book of Ephesians. And uh, as we come through this church and culture series, uh, one of the things that we wanted to do is to have an opportunity just to respond. What has God been doing over the last five weeks as we've been spending time in his word? How can we be in the world but not of the world? And what does that look like for us? So if you're new here and maybe you haven't come uh, much or this is your first time, uh, this is the end of that series, but it doesn't matter if you were here or not. This is going to be an opportunity for us, what we call an Experiencing God uh, weekend, where we're just going to allow God to do what he needs to do in our lives. And so I pray that you would uh, have an opportunity to experience God in that way. And so we're going to look at the book of Ephesians in chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. And so if you have your Bibles, please open them up to that. Uh, what we want to do is look at this prayer and this 
One of the things that's interesting about Paul's prayers is that he took the time to be very specific about what he's praying for. And that's one of the things. It's not just, you know, Lord, give them strength and and give them health and help them to be effective. There's some very specific wording that I think will bring some great encouragement to us uh, as it has to my life as I spent time doing that. Uh, And it's a prayer for us, I believe, not only for them in, in Ephesus, but also for us as a church. I look at this prayer and I think, you know what, Lord, I would love this for our church here in Southridge, uh, that we would be more effective, that we would be uh, experiencing uh, our God in such a powerful way. So let's have a look at this passage, Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. It says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. This prayer, as we spend some time in it, there's three things I want to pull out of this for us very quickly, because this is a shortened message, because we want to spend more time just allowing God to to work in us in this way. So uh, as we look at this passage, here's what the first thing I want us to look at. When we talk about being filled to overflowing, and that's what our desire is as a church, that we would be filled to overflowing, the first thing is this prayer brings out is it's a prayer to be strong. It's a prayer to be strong. And the very first part of this passage as we look at it for many of us here is is a a real challenge. Now, I don't know about what you've experienced this week or what you've been experiencing over this past month or so, but maybe you're here and you don't feel very strong. There are times when I come to church and I don't feel strong. Uh, Oftentimes, by the time I'm done in in a worship service, I feel a lot stronger, that's for sure. Because the words that we sing and the opportunity we have to be in God's word strengthens us as we get into that. But for us, maybe we're here and maybe we're just feeling a little bit tired. Maybe we're feeling a little bit weak. Maybe we're feeling like, you know what, God, this is not making a whole lot of sense. And as we've talked about the, a number of topics over the last five weeks, maybe one of them or two of them have really challenged you and you're struggling with that. I had a number of people last week as I did my one on parenting uh, come up to me and just said, you know what, that was a really timely message because I feel like often I feel like a failure as a parent. And I know I've been there. Uh, And so maybe the, the encouragement for us today is just be strong. And this is what Paul is sharing at the church in Ephesus as we look at the verses 14 to 17. For this reason I kneel before the Father for whom every family in heaven and earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, this is what it says, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I hope you picked that up. I hope you saw the very first thing that he's praying for. It comes out of the Father's glorious riches. So he says, out of the Father's glorious riches, he has amazing riches, doesn't he? Our Father has endless resources of riches and he wants to pour them upon us, his children. I hope we don't miss that. I hope we don't miss that, that it's an acknowledgement that you know what, out of those glorious riches, the Paul then says that he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. Maybe that's what we need today, that from the good, good father, the strength that comes through his Holy Spirit in us is that we don't need to, we we can't forget that we're not alone. God didn't leave us alone. He left us with the Holy Spirit. And this Holy Spirit wants to do a great and awesome work in us to help us to be strong, to help us to, to know that we're not alone. And not only is it just a surface thing to be strong, sometimes you can get a brace. I had to wear a brace um, yesterday because my, I've got some tendonitis in my, in my thumb and it's really, really sore. But once you get a brace on it, it feels so much better. 
But that's not the kind of brace we're talking about here. That's not the kind of strength we're talking about here because he says, as you look at it, that through his spirit in your what? In your inner being. In your inner being. It's not just a surface thing. It is something that comes from deep, deep within. That's where God wants us to be strengthened. And then for the reason so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Faith is sometimes can be really fleeting, can't it? One day we might have a real strong faith and the next day it might just feel like we're, we're just being tossed in, around by the wind. But God wants us to be strengthened. That's the prayer that Paul has for this church, that it would be strengthened. Um, so as we look at this, uh, how do we live in this culture? To be in the world but not of the world, we need strength because the reality is it's going to get hard. It's going to get hard. I remember Brent sharing in the very first message the idea when he talked about truth, the idea is that it's getting, that we have an easier part in the fact that it's going to be easier to figure out who's a Christian and who's not by how we live, by what we believe, by the truth that we uh, work towards and work from. We need to be strong so that we don't fear so that we live out the truth, so that we become citizens and recognize that we are citizens here and that we are willing to be an example that Christ wants us to be. So we, the prayer is for us to be strong. The second thing the prayer is, is that for us to be filled, for us to be filled. So in order to be filled to overflowing, we need to be filled. And so as we look at this part of the passage, we need to understand what this is looking at. So Ephesians three seventeen to 19 says this, And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people, that's us, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. As we look at this part here, it talked first about how we were rooted and established in love. This church began out of the love of believers to come together and to fellowship together so that it could be a light in their culture in Ephesus. Very similar to our church here 23 years ago, got together and started because we believed that it was important that we have another church to be able to speak into the Langley area. And so gathered together because we were rooted and established in love and we had that common goal that we wanted to reach out into this community. That all of them would understand and to grasp, that word grasp is very important. It's not something that comes easy. We need to grasp for it and hold on to it with all our might that we would understand the Lord's love for us. That we would grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. Now that is a lifelong journey. That is not something that we just go to Bible college and discover. It's not something that we can read through the Bible and discover. It is an ongoing journey for us. And I hope you are discovering new ways that God shows his love to you. How high and deep and long and wide is the love of God. It's an amazing love. It is a lifelong adventure that we get to do together. We get to do that together and I think that's a pretty powerful thing. And that it says here, to know this love that surpasses knowledge. This is a love that's not just in our head. This is a love that we must experience in our heart and in our life for it to make a difference. It's not something that is just about, yeah, I know love is this and I know love is that. It is to experience it. It's to have it in our heart. It is to have it in so much that we actually are compelled to live that out. Compelled to show and to experience God's love so that our culture can experience it through us. And they don't want to know what we believe about his love. They want to see it experienced in our life, first and foremost. They want to see that it makes a difference. We talked about that last week. We can't impart that what we don't possess. We can try, we can say, yeah, this is what I believe, and, but if it doesn't make a difference in our life, people are going to go, yeah, that's just not for me. But when it makes a difference in our life, and we share that, then it actually makes a difference in their life as well. Filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now, I've been encouraging our staff. It was one of the passages I went with our staff in our meeting. Um, the idea of this passage 
My encouragement to us as a staff, as we lead and as we serve, is that we would do so out of the fullness of God in our life that we would serve this church family and this community out of the fullness of what God is doing in our life. It's very hard to serve when it's, where our tank is half empty. It's very hard to serve when it's empty. We need to actually have it flow over top, not just uh, halfway, not just three quarters. And those things are fine. Sometimes we do serve in that. I, I've been there. I know what that's like. It's still doable. But to impact culture... It's got to be full to overflowing. That's exactly what Paul's prayer here was for the church in Ephesus, that we would minister and lead and serve out of the fullness of what God was doing in their lives and what God is doing in our life. Those are two things, that we would have the power and that it would be filled, we'd be filled to overflowing. How are we in that? What does that look like for us? If it's not something that we are experiencing, maybe we need to look at this prayer and say, God, I want this. I want this in my life. I want to see what that can look like in my life. And pray that over yourself. Pray that for our church. Pray that for our leaders. Pray that for for the people that we do life together with. Because if we want to make a difference and we want to impact our culture, we're going to need to do so in such a tangible way that they would experience that love that would be full to overflowing. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your goodness to us. And Lord, as we continue in our time of worship, our prayer, Father, is that you would help us to understand, uh, even through the words of the songs, even through the, the commitments that are being made later on in the service as we, as we strive to make this message uh, and this series more impactful in our lives. How are we part of the world, but not, how are we in the world, but not part of it, Father? to not be consumed by the culture impacting us and influencing us, but that, Lord, it would be the other way around. Out of the fullness of what you are doing in our midst and in our lives, that it would flow out of that. So God, continue to speak to us as we now sing these songs that will help us to reflect even more on that. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The power that raised Jesus from the dead is the same power that we have. So that song is pretty powerful. That song reminds us some pretty important truths uh, in that. And then my last point for us this morning as we come out of that prayer is that it is a prayer that needs to be lived out. What does that look like? What does that look like? How do we spend five weeks together and what does that do for us? Did we just find some interesting information and we can then just go and live our lives as we were before? Or is it gonna make a difference? Is it going to make some difference in our life where we are going to make another step forward to uh, surrender a little bit more of ourselves to Christ? Help him uh, become more of us or help him to have more of us so that it's less of us and more of him. That's what Christ wants. So what does that look like for our lives? Because we looked at how we can live in culture and this table here was influential throughout the whole series because we all referred to it, all of us that preached referred to this table and the first part where uh, Brent was here and he talked about the word of God and the truth and we have a Bible here that in this day and age in this culture truth is is relative which means you know what you can have your own truth it doesn't matter what it is but we believe there's an absolute truth there has to be because otherwise we have chaos and so when we look at the how to impact culture we got to realize that we have the truth Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And then he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. We have to cling to him with every being of our, every fiber of our being, everything that we have, we need to cling to that truth. So maybe we're here and we're said, you know what, that's been really challenging for me. I need to get more into God's word. Maybe that's our step that we spend some time in God's word, know it well, know it better. And you know what? It doesn't matter how many times we failed at that. We know what it's like. We start off in in our devotions and we start off really well for a few days or a few weeks. Before long, we forget it passes on and we have days and weeks where we don't do anything. It's okay. Start where we're at. There's a new day. God gives us a new day, a new opportunity to get into God's word. And then Ben came in and we talked about bigotry and we talked about how at the table we brought a couple different chairs 
Because you know what? There are people that have different viewpoints, different ideas, different understandings, uh, different belief systems. We can't make them believe what we believe, uh, but we have to embrace them because there are people that are loved by, they are people that are loved by God. When Jesus was doing ministry, he didn't just hang out with people that believed what he believed. He went in and he talked with sinners and he met with people and he just shared and he cared for them. And some of them turned and became part of his family. And some didn't. Some chose not to. Maybe you're here and maybe this is, you know, uh, you're part of this journey and, and you're on a spiritual journey and you're not even sure why you're here. Or maybe you're here because there's, some, there's something here about this place that really intrigues you and, and causes you to feel like you belong. That's wonderful. But maybe your first step is to say, you know what, I want to become part of God's family. I want to become part of God's culture so that I can influence our, the culture that we're in. Then we talked a, a little bit about fear and uh, one of the things that uh, Craig talked about was he took his chair and he took it away from the table and put it uh, somewhere else so that it, in idea of going out so that we could actually influence others where they are. And it means that we're going to be going out of our church setting here and going out into the community and we're going to love on people out there. That's what we need to do. So maybe that's our challenge. Maybe we need to not live in that fear that something's going to happen to us. Maybe we won't be friends with them or maybe we're going to cause them to be mad at us. You know what? That's God's deal. We need to just be truth and be, and be light for them. But we can't always assume that they're going to come here first. We need to go out there. And then we talked a, a little bit as we uh, wrestled with uh, other things, the, the place setting. There's a place setting at this table. And uh, we talked about what it means to invite people into our home, showing hospitality, showing love. That first and foremost, we need to love God. But next, we need to love our neighbors as ourself. That's a, maybe that's the step. We were challenged to maybe do something before family day, which is tomorrow. We had that conversation in our home. What are we going to do? We're gonna, this afternoon, we're going to make cookies and we're going to go in and bless our neighborhood and love on them. Simple, but we're going to do it as a family. We're going we're gonna to show our kids what that looks like and it's going to be challenging, but you know what? We're going to do that because we love our neighborhood. And then last week, we brought some different chairs, different size chairs to talk about the idea of what it means to uh, involve our family. And this table is, is really important and we were challenged with the fact that there's a spiritual connotation to this table. The idea of sharing our faith. That the passage that we read in Deuteronomy 6 that we need to do it all the time. And whether, we're, whether we rise or whether we sit, whether we, we're eating, we need to tie it on our hands, on our foreheads, which is in, in symbolic of every opportunity we have to share our faith. That as we sit around the table with our kids, and for those of you that are parents and have kids, this table is significant. It should be. This is where we do life together, where we come together after we've scattered and gone to school, gone to work, done whatever we're doing, we come back together and say, hey, listen, what did we experience? Yeah, I had a hard day. It was really challenging. I got bullied. I got, uh, you know, called out on a couple things. You know what? I did something wrong that I shouldn't have done. We talk about it. We pray about it. We do life together. So as we come uh, in this next stage, as we uh, spend some time together, the, the result of that is some two opportunities we want to give for you to, to respond. First and foremost is for some of us here, we need to pray. We just say, you know what? I don't know what I'm doing. Or maybe, you know, I've got some things I've got going on in my life that my next step is to just spend some time in prayer. And so we have a prayer team that'll be at the back. I would just invite you to be a part of that. Just come and just have some prayer. Just be able to step out and say, you know what, I need you to pray for me that I would, I would be the father that God wants me to be. I'd be the mother that, that God wants me to be. That I would be uh, the student that God wants me to be. And just have somebody pray over you. It doesn't need to be long, but just have somebody pray over you would be really important. So during these next few songs, as you feel led, you can go to the back. There are people, they have lanyards on and, and uh, they're all over and they just want to pray with you. Allow them to pray with you. Don't leave here without, if you feel that need to do that, get up out of your seat. Go and visit with them and just say, I need prayer. Please do that before you leave. Secondly, uh, there are some pieces of paper in your seat back pocket in front of you, just some blank paper. 
I would encourage you, and we've done this in the first service, that's why these are full here, is to just write maybe what's one thing that God's been really challenging you with. What is one thing that God is really challenging you with? And just write it on there. Uh, You know, we talked a lot about the idea that we can't impart what we don't possess. Maybe the thing is, I just need to spend time with God more. And that's what you write down. Uh, Maybe there's an opportunity that God has said, I need to speak to so-and-so about Jesus. Or I need to make an effort to visit with my neighbors. Or whatever it be. It may not have nothing to do with that. It may just be, you know what, God, I need to be praying more. Or just thank you, God, for what you're doing in my life. Can you keep it up? Or God, I'm struggling and I just need help. Would you be my strength? And then I'd encourage you, once you write that down, is just to fold it. And and if you're like me, you'll fold it really neatly. We'd encourage you not to. We're we're gonna do some things with these just to make a, a collage of them, but we're not, these are anonymous. You don't need to worry about anybody reading them out loud or anything like that. But we just want you to provide an opportunity, provide you an opportunity of just responding. Just write it down, fold it, Fold it quirky if you want to do that. Fold it nice and neat if you're like me and you need to do that. Um, and then just come on up as the songs are being sung and just put them in the, in the basket. Now, we t- our message is full to overflowing. Uh, I'd love to see these just flow right out. That God would just use whatever's in here to t- help us to take that next step. So as these songs are done, maybe some of you are, are just need to sit and worship. That's great. That's what this time is for. But if you need to move around, you need to go pray, please go do that. And I'd encourage you to come, all of us, take one of those sheets of paper, bring it up, and allow God to use those things. Let's, let's worship together. You know, this, it's beautiful here, this illustration, that some of the pieces are falling out. This is what we talk about when full to overflowing, what God is doing here in our church. It looks like that's what's happening. And I hope that's coming as a result of what God's doing in our lives individually. And I just want to pray this prayer over us as a church family that uh, comes from Ephesians chapter 3. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen us with power through his spirit in our inner being so that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that we may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all the generations forever and ever. And all God's people said, Amen.